Meraki TV is proudly brought to you by George Focus of Focus Beyond. Education for investing wisely. I'm Anna Savo and this is Meraki TV, brought to you by George Focus of Focus Beyond, education for investing wisely. Tonight we delve into the birth of democracy in Athens. Helen makes decadent kataifi bugatsa. Oh yes, you heard right. We talk to humanitarian nurse Helen Zahos, Stavrula gives us all the glitz and goss, and Jana takes us on a voyeuristic journey through the nightlife of Mykonos. But to get us started, Levendi Jewelers, a Greek family tradition that reached Australian shores via South Africa, Levendi have positioned themselves as one of the top tier jewellery designers and manufacturers in Australia with clientele ranging from the everyday to Hollywood stars. To embellish in the beautiful design and all round special experience of Levendi, here's Stavrula with Mike Levendi. Hello Mike, thank you for inviting us here today. Firstly, can you give me a little background? How did the Lavendi brand establish? The Lavendi brand established uh, in South Africa um, by Nick and Sophia, my parents, and that was in 1967. Do you design the jewellery? Yes, I designed it. Um, originally, Sophia, my mother, designed it. My mother, a um, young little girl from eight year old, born in Greece, arrived in South Africa, no parents, and basically, um, always felt something about fashion. There was something in her blood. And she was the one that got my father started in the diamond and jewelry business. From there on, she actually brought some of the most amazing designs um, into our store in South Africa and sometimes years and years ahead of their uh, time. Okay, where do you draw your inspiration from? If you look around the way buildings, motor cars, the way the world is shaped, you can see you know, where the fashion is going. But some people love classic pieces and Levendi are known to make incredible classic pieces um, right up to contemporary. For example, um, this emerald um, from Colombia is a beautiful classic piece of jewellery. It's a classic where somebody might walk in and want something outstanding and we can create a cuff which is very contemporary, very different. You have won many, many awards. Tell me something about um, some of your favourite award pieces. Well, we can we go way back from 1985 where we won an award using an actual compact disc and then men's award using diamond braces from Wall Street right up to pieces that there's the earrings you're wearing um, which were won in 2000, the Millennium Awards um, and the current awards which we've now done are there's this ring here, the men's award. This is one of our special pieces, very very new. This I did design um, with uh, another lady called Amalia Stavrios. How stable is it? This is most as stable as you can ever get. This diamond will never fall out. It's basically set into the actual uh, metal, but the claws are what are moving. Your brand is amazing. You would have some amazing customers. Any celebrities you can tell us about? Look, we've had many celebrities over the years. You know, there's just some of them have walked into the store, you know, from Jerry Hall in sort of disguise but then you realize who she is, to Whoopi Goldberg. Um, we've even taken jewelry overseas to places like um, to the United States, to Navratilova, Martina. Is it a challenge designing for men? It's a challenge because men like to be more subtle. We actually designed the Levendi watch. We call it the Ithaca range because we're from Ithaki and the watch has got even the hands of Sparta. Everything is limited edition, there are many different dials and the watch is designed with the bidavro, the angles, the hands are from the swords of the Spartan warriors. And finally, can you give us a style tip? I think the most important thing is that when you wear jewellery, wear something, whether it be fine or large, whatever size, something that suits your personality and the piece would look amazing. Thank you so much, Mike. 
Thank you, Rula, and thank you, Meraki TV. Every Greek will proudly proclaim that it was his or her ancestors that gave democracy to the world. Ask us to elaborate, though, and we may just become tongue-tied. Well, here to save us all from just that fate is our mini-doc on the birth of democracy in Athens. In the early days, Greece was settled in isolated pockets called city-states. Athens was one of these city-states. Between 2000 BC and 800 BC, these city-states were ruled by monarchy, meaning one person. That person being chosen by the people themselves. These kings would make laws, act as judges, perform religious ceremonies, lead armies in times of war, and also had aristocrats to advise them. These aristocrats, however, had no real power, and so it's not surprising that after a while, the aristocrats overthrew the government and took power for themselves, turning into an oligarchy. Power by few. The aristocrats were wealthy landowners who, in the most part, ignored the poor and passed laws that served themselves, making the rich richer and the poor poorer. The poor then turned to strong leaders who promised to improve their lives. These were mainly military men who then took power by force, called tyrants. Most tyrants managed to at least change laws that helped the poor, though there were some who ruled most harshly. Until 507 BC, when the Athenian leader Cleisthenes introduced a system of political reform called Demokratia, rule by the people. Cleisthenes changed the political organisation from the four traditional tribes based on family to ten tribes based on area of residence. From here, representatives were chosen for the Vuli, a council of 500 men who served for one year, picked by a random lottery. The Vuli did most of the hands-on work of the government and it also decided which matters would be presented to the second institution Cleisthenes implemented, the Ecclesia. The Ecclesia, or Assembly, was the sovereign governing body. Any member of the Demos, citizens whose parents were Athenian citizens, male and over the age of 18, could attend the meetings of the Ecclesia about 40 times a year. Debates here were resolved by a majority vote, sometimes by a show of hands and others a closed ballot. The third important institution was the Dicasteria, the courts, Every day, more than 500 jurors were chosen by lot from male citizens over 30. Jurors were paid for their work so that the job could be accessible to all and not just the wealthy. These three institutions were a bold move toward a fair system of government never before seen. And though this democratic rule did not survive more than 200 years in ancient Greece, the ideals and processes have been influencing politicians and governments ever since. It's time for an income breakthrough to free yourself from working for money, have your money work for you. George Focus of Focus Beyond will show you step by step how to generate income from the share market irrespective of if it goes up or down. Access resources that do the hard work for you and devote no more than 60 minutes a month so you can enjoy financial freedom and time with family. To change your life forever, go to focusbeyond.com now. Eremia Home Care Services. It's so difficult asking for help. Take the stress out and enjoy precious time because there's no place like home. Eremia.com.au Whether it's Melbourne, Darwin, Queensland, something exotic or just perfect Greece, call Mega Travel 9824 2427. SCJewelry.com Specialising in evil eye jewellery and pieces full of fun that are distinct, unique and you. SCJewelry.com a C is you. Yeah. Hi Meraki, so I'm here at Scandinavian Bar in Mykonos town with the owner Savros. What is Scandinavian Bar all about? 
Well, guys, Scandinavian Bar is one uh, place that started in 1978. It's one of the first bars in Mykonos, and uh, it's a family business, as, as every Greek uh, has a family business. Drinks, great atmosphere, party, dance, three different rooms, two bars, one club. So what are your opening hours? From May till 6. Long hours. <laughs> Long hours. So what do tourists here find different to other bars? Well, uh, it has everything. It has an outside area, it has an inside area, it has a club, it has bars. You can chill out with your friends, you can party, you can dance and uh, all that in one block. I see you have different sections, yes. so what is upstairs different to downstairs here? Well, downstairs is, is one of the bars and upstairs is the club, so it's a way you go. Yeah, it's mostly upstairs is for dancing, but uh, you cannot stop people dancing from uh, all over, right? So later on, if you're going to be here, you're going to see what I'm talking about. So what type of music can Australians or tourists find at this bar? Do you play Greek music? No, no, no. Mostly it's uh, top 40s. Uh, um, so the yeah, latest yeah. music of today. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So when do you run all year round or is it half a year? Uh, the, this bar, the good thing about this bar is that uh, it's the first bar that works and the last one that still rocks. So uh, we start on the uh, beginning of May till uh, 10 of October. So whenever you are here, guys, you join us. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi guys, welcome back to Helen's Cuisina. Tonight I've got a little treat for you. It's bugatsa, but with gadaifi. Before you make your custard, it's always a good idea to do your sugar syrup first. So in here we've got one cup of water to one cup of sugar. I've got a little bit of orange juice and a little bit of orange blossom water. We're just gonna juice it up tonight. To start with, you're gonna need a medium sized pot. We've got two cups of milk, a little bit of orange rind. I love that orange flavor. Remember, we're making this with a lot of orange zest tonight. And I've got a quarter of a cup of fine semolina. We're gonna whisk that through and start the process. So as you're whisking your milk and your semolina, about a teaspoon of vanilla is always really nice. What you're looking for is for the semolina to dissolve in the milk. So just keep whisking it and once you pull it away from the pan, you'll be able to see if the semolina is dissolved. So while our milk is on the stove and it's simmering away with our semolina, keep an eye on it because you don't want it to burn. We're going to make our egg custard. For that, you're going to need two eggs and one cup of sugar. Then we need to whisk this until it's light and fluffy and until you can't actually hear the sugar granules at the bottom of the whisk. So our milk's ready, our egg custard is ready. Now we've just got to combine them. It's always a good idea to take it off the heat and slowly pour in the egg custard and whisk really, really vigorously. So once the egg custard is in the milk, it's a good idea now to put it on really low heat and keep whisking. If you haven't had a workout, this is probably a great way of having a workout. Whisking builds up those muscles. So our custard is ready, it's cooling down. And now we're going to get on to the gadaifi. This is the easy part. All you need is gadaifi and lots and lots of butter. So I've got about a packet of gadaifi here. And what I'm looking for is to break it down, shred it as much as possible. And between all of that, I'm going to rub some butter through there because you want lots and lots of butter through it. That's what's going to make it magic. Okay, so we're ready to assemble these bad boys. So what you've got is your little bowl and your gadaifi. And what you want to do is actually lightly press it against the bowl. And I mean lightly press it. So as you can see, I've left a nice little hole in the middle. So I've packed it lightly on the side. And now we put in our custard. Seal it off at the bottom. And then I'm going to show you my Duncan Slam. And I mean Duncan Slam. 
These babies are ready to be cooked in 180 degrees for about 15 minutes. You just want them golden brown. So here it is guys, the gadaifi is ready. It's straight out of the oven. We're going to put our sugar syrup over it and it's ready to eat. Simply pour it over. And of course, you need to zhuzh it up. So I like to put a few little pistachios and a few slithered almonds over it. You can put some chocolate sauce over it if you like. It's so indulgent, but superb. DJ Crazy Con presents Grease 2016, the 17th installment in his iconic Grease CD series. 20 tracks of Grease's biggest artists: Bantilidis, Kiamos, Retos, Master Tempo, Salty, Dalidis, Vegas, Knockout, and many more. Plus a trademark super mix by superstar Greek Australian DJ producer Crazy Con. Get your hands on the hottest Greek CD this year: Grease 2016. ValetSalons.com.au Enjoy the ultimate Hollywood hair and body experience right here in Cogra with Valet. Mention Medaki TV for a $25 hair treatment free with any service. ValetSalons.com.au The Many Faces of Hellenic Culture A fascinating read by author Billy Kotsis who takes us to the Greek colonies of the Mediterranean, Black Sea, Asia Minor and the Middle East. Available from Amazon and anywhere good Greek books are sold. Helen Zahos seems to have spent half a lifetime on a mission of service. A qualified nurse, she has donated her time and expertise to help during the Greek crisis, at Christmas Island, the Nepal earthquake, and most recently in the migrant crisis in Mithilini. I was very grateful for five minutes to sit and chat with this extraordinary woman. Helen, welcome again to Meraki TV. Thank you for having me again. You're very welcome. Let's just recap very quickly. Last year, you were over in Mitilini with the massive refugee stuff that was going on. Give us a quick rundown of what went down. So I went over as a volunteer with Medicine de Monde, which was a, a medical organisation. And uh, yeah, I spent six weeks on Lesbos and six weeks on the border of Firum and Greece. And uh, yeah, I looked after refugees that were coming through that needed medical needs. Was it pretty violent? There were times that was quite scary. There was a lot of violence, not just amongst the refugees, um, but also with the authorities as well. So it was quite a heightened environment, I should say. You are, you are getting lots of questions from people, people asking how can they help. I, you've started a volunteer Facebook page. I Tell have. us a little bit about that. I'm still getting the, the Facebook page together. It is basically a page where volunteers can go on the Facebook page, follow links that I've added on there to help them uh, find groups that they might be interested in joining or um, giving money to um, volunteering whilst they're over there. Some people I think are going now at this time of year for a holiday and it's a great opportunity to spend a week out of say a six week holiday to spend one week volunteering their services. You don't have to be a nurse or a medical person. If you can provide a blanket, if you can cook some food, even bring some groceries along um, and help the, the refugees and the other volunteers. And what do you say to people who say, look, it's a Linida, prepi na kitaxu me tus dikus mas prota. You know, it's almost, I, th I think some people almost see it as a betrayal that yeah. you're helping the refugees, not the Greeks. What have you got to say to that? Well, uh, firstly, uh, you're correct in what you're saying. I've had a lot of comments. My own family in Greece have made that comment to me, and it's something that's caused a lot of arguments around dinner tables. But what they don't realise is I've gone to Greece myself to volunteer purely uh, to help Greek people that were struggling in the financial crisis in the past. But I also think if we're volunteering and helping in the refugee crisis, we're actually taking the pressure off the local Greek people that are picking up the pieces. If you're taking, not necessarily very young kids, but say some teenagers with you, would you recommend taking a day and letting them help out as well? Oh, I think that's important. 
I honestly do. And I understand, look, earlier you touched on uh, about violence and danger, but these camps have little children and families just like you or I would have. And I think it's important to teach our children what's actually happening out there. And I think it's refreshing for these kids nowadays to see that not everyone gets an iPad or an mm. iPhone. Um, they are quiet. You know, we live a very different life here. Now, you're also just starting, um, just quietly, a little book for a nurse that was murdered. Yes. So. I don't know Gail Woodford personally, but I actually worked out in the area that she was working at the time she was murdered. And as a remote area nurse and having spent time out in the APY lands after I left the Northern Territory, uh, I felt that there's a common bond that us remote area nurses experience and that we have because we have done time out in these very remote areas. So I, I got a few uh, nurses together and we're going to write some short stories and compile that, but I really would like to dedicate that and any proceeds that are, you know, come out of that to go to Gail's family. Helen, thank you so much for all that you've done and you continue to do. Thank and we you. look forward to talking to you again. Thanks so much. And can I just say a really big thank you to all of the Meraki TV team because you've all been there from the start and I've kept in contact with you and Maria and Vasily and we've had these chats and, you know, even while I was overseas, and before I left and all the support so thank you so much thank you here at 10 best Greek islands if you're wanting a detour from Santorini Mykonos and other popular spots best for amazing blue beaches Lefgada Consider the Caribbean of Greece, Lefgada has the most exotic blue beaches. Connected to the mainland through a small bridge, it can be accessed by car. It's also the birthplace of goddess Aphrodite. Best for fabulous architecture, Simi. Simi has one of the most breathtaking harbours, with pastel-coloured neoclassical houses, bars and chic boutiques, and dozens of tiny beaches, accessible only by boat. A rugged gem, Simi is only an hour's ferry ride from Rhodes. Best for volcanic rock, Milos. This is where the famous Venus de Milo was found that's now at the Louvre in Paris. Milos has spectacular rock formations, hot springs and as many as 75 beaches, some of which rival the best in all of Greece. Best for hideaway, Gufonissia, made up of two tiny islets, Anno and Kato Gufonissi. Gato remains uninhabited, while Ano Kufonisi is a buzzing little fishing community. With more boats than residents and hardly any roads or cars, everyone walks or cycles. Best for ruins, Delos. The birthplace of Apollo, Delos boasts some of the most extensive remains from the Golden Hellenistic Age and earlier of Classical Greece. The entire island consists of ruins temples, statues, mosaics and a theatre. You can only visit it as a day trip. Best for fitness? Hydra. Hydra, which shot to fame in 1957 as location for Boy on a Dolphin, starring Sophia Loren, remains endearingly time-warped. Being free of motor vehicles, most people walk everywhere. Horses, mules and donkeys and water taxis provide public transportation. Best for traditional village life, Karpathos, secluded midway between Rhodes and Crete. Karpathos started developing in the last decades. As a result, it remained unspoiled and authentic, with picturesque villages away from mass tourism. Best for Bond fans? Nisiros. Several Greek islands have found fame thanks to film, Skopelos with Mamma Mia and Amorgos with the Big Blue. James Bond fans, however, should head for Nisiros, whose spectacular volcano appeared in Moonraker. Best for villas and monasteries? Skopelos. Staying in villas are becoming the trend. Skopelos has wonderful options. The island is also known for its monasteries. There are dozens scattered around. Best for spirituality? Patmos. The Jerusalem of the Aegean, Patmos, is the place where St John wrote the Book of Revelation, designated the Holy Island. Visitors can see the cave where John received his revelation, the Cave of the Apocalypse.
Olivia, thanks so much for joining us again tonight. We are, of course, brought to you by George Focus of Focus Beyond, education for investing wisely. A big thank you to our guests, Mike Lavendi and Helen Zahos. If you'd like to stay in touch during the week, catch our Facebook page, Instagram and Twitter feeds, our YouTube channel, and of course, our website, www.meraki.tv. Until next week, Bidya, feel like you're from me. Anna Savo. Meraki TV is proudly brought to you by George Focus of Focus Beyond, education for investing wisely.